Well, a weekend of mixed results, but overall good play puts the Predators one step closer to the playoffs. We'll talk about it today on the Locked On Predators podcast. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Predators podcast your first listen of the day every single day. We are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I want to start with a special shout out to our loyal Locked On Pred heads out there, the everyday who tune into every single show. We love you guys and we appreciate the support you give us week in and week out. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer at Penalty Box Radio, and I have a partner in crime. You do. I'm Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer at Penalty Box Radio. A, I guess you would call it a mixed weekend, Ann? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really hard to describe these games effectively. <laughs> but yeah. I'll say that. Mixed weekend. Yeah, like obviously, maybe you look at just the results on paper and you think, yeah, I mean, it, it does the job, just not really thrilled about it. You watch yeah. the play, maybe you get more excited about the Predators kind of being in the right place, headed into the postseason. Uh, of course, there's the matter of some other teams playing at the moment that are going to impact uh, the Nashville Predators playoff picture. We'll talk about that. Um for the record, we are recording this right after the Predators Devils game. Uh, the Blues versus Ducks game is still going on. It kind of looks like the Ducks are going to lose. It's 5 guys? 4 now. The Ducks just scored. 11 okay. Okay. So it was ago. what? 5 3 a minute ago. Okay. It was five, three minutes. Uh, Y'all, we are trying to stay on top of this. Yeah. Uh, long story short, um, we're not going to know if the Predators are officially in the playoffs or not yet. Their, their magic number is one, uh, as it stands now, uh, could be different, uh, when you're actually listening to this, which <laughs> even if that's the case, just bear with us till we do tomorrow's show. So on today's show, we'll talk about both the Islanders loss and the New Jersey Devils overtime win, uh, and we'll see where the Preds are in the playoff picture. At this point, uh, before we dive into that, though, I want to mention today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code Locked On NHL to get up to a one hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. All right, and so normally on Monday we do our one word to describe uh, the game, um, or you know, post game we do the one word to describe the game. Uh, coming off of back-to-back on this weekend. So let's go ahead and just kind of dive in to both games. And we'll do a one word to describe the weekend. So yeah. uh, obviously we had what happened Saturday on Long Island. Uh, Predators lose 2-0 to the New York Islanders in a game that in absolutely normal circumstances, the Predators probably um, would have at least scored a goal. Um, yeah, yes. absolutely dominant performance. Um, by um, why well, can't I remember the goaltender's yep. name? Semyon Vol- 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 Varlamov. Vol- 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 I can't yeah. say it, but I can remember it. Vol- yeah, Vol- 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 um, that guy, yeah, that's uh, absolutely great performance from him in net. Uh, also, great performance from the New York Islanders defense who had 33 block shots in this game. Uh, John Hines is somewhere salivating over that number um, and the Predators lose two to nothing, but you watch this game man, and you had to be at least happy with how that game turned out. Like it, not, not the final result, but you had to be happy with how the Predators played in that one. Yeah. You look at this New York Islanders game and of course you hate that the Predators didn't score a goal and, and didn't get those two points. But when you look at the on ice performance, I mean, this really was a game that a goaltender stole. I mean, it was an absolutely phenomenal performance by their goaltender whose name I cannot pronounce, but you know who I'm talking about. 
Um, and, and, you know, it was also a game that was Barry Trotz's first trip back to the New York Islanders since having left. And I thought, okay, look, they were That's like, true. let's show him some really good defense while he's back. So, yeah. you know, it, it really was, but you look at what the Predators were doing. The Predators really had a great advantage on the ice. They played very well. That was uh, the type of game. It was a little bit of a slow start, but once they got going, that was the type of a game where you feel like, hey, you know what? During that 18-game point streak, this looked very much like the Nashville Predators that skated away with a win. So it wasn't horrible. Yeah. It, it was one of those where it's like you watch the – if you, if you just were to let's look at the back box score or something like that, you're like, oh, 2 nothing to New York. That's – a little bit disappointing. Where's the offense? Where's, mm -hmm. you know, sort of the energy, blah, 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 blah. But uh, if you watch this game, you know, it was there, I think, for the Nashville Predators. I yeah. think it was – they were certainly buzzing um, around the net. I thought offensively they did well. They didn't score on the power play, but I thought the power play looked good. Um, I think there was – the Nashville Predators did a lot of things right. Yes. And that game against the Islanders uh, just couldn't pull out the W in that one. Uh, not the case for last night, though, uh, against the New Jersey Devils. Uh, Nashville Predators go down uh, one nothing, tie it up, uh, thanks to uh, a good goal there by Mr. Roman Yossi, uh, the captain, staying hot this yes. late in the season. Uh, New Jersey got one back on, as you kind of alluded to, a little bit of a wolfy sort of play from UC Saros there. Yes. Um, and it happened, happens to the best of us. But Luke Evangelista on a, you know, on a very clutch power play uh, ties it up late in the third period uh, following a power play that was certainly not clutch. So that's a storyline that I think we'll talk about here in a little yes. bit uh and then game goes to a shootout ryan o'reilly gets the shootout winner uc saros stops all three attempts and uh a three to win over the new jersey devils uh another one that you know you would say again maybe a little bit tougher but in context you know the predators did pretty much everything right in this one as well yeah, this was, again, not a bad looking game. And it wasn't, again, that Nashville didn't generate some really high quality chances in this game against New Jersey. Um, first of all, uh, Capo, uh, Capo Kakinen left the game. He uh, got hit in an unforeseen unfortunate area as, on a 92. As Emma called it, he got hit in the Dennis Grebishkoffs. <laughs> And, and it was a 92 mile an hour shot. So pray for him and his lineage. I don't know. But, you know, Jake Allen came in. Jake Allen played last night and he came in and really had an excellent game for having played, you know, back to back games. He came in and really robbed Nashville on some shots. But they again, like you said, generating some good chances. I feel like Nashville really kind of got going. The one thing I see in these two games is it feels like they're not quite getting to their game from, from initial puck drop. Um, but overall, you look at these games and you're like, you know what? This is not that Nashville looked terrible. This, you know, and here's what I will say. The New Jersey Devils are a very good team who had very bad goaltending that has left them in the position that they're in right now with regards to, you know, not making the postseason and losing mm -hmm. their head coach and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I thought not too shabby. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you think the UC Soros um, – dominating the the goaltending performance in front of the new jersey brain trust uh maybe made the devils a little bit yeah they were like come on tom fitzgerald we we said we wanted him yeah yeah we <laughs> don't we, who, who needs to trade for jacob markstrom <laughs> you, you had this on the table right here that's right yeah. Um, so we still have one words to describe mm -hmm. these past two games. Normally you do that off the top, but hey, we have we have two games to break down. So give us a little bit slack here. Uh, we'll talk about where the Predators are in the playoff picture. Again, as of before the end of the Blues Nux game. So this can very well change. 
uh, as well as some highs and lows for the past week of Predators hockey and uh, the games this weekend. Before we get to that, though, I want to mention today's episode once again brought to you by Sleeper. We are in the stretch run, Preds fans, and whether we wind up making the playoffs or, again, if you're listening to this after the conclusion of the Ducks game, maybe we're already in the playoffs or maybe we just, you know, go on an epic collapse of all epic collapses. Regardless of how this season turns out, you all can still win big playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleepers are our number one choice for daily fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether studs like Ryan O'Reilly, Philip Forsberg, Roman Yossi, and more will record more or less than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. If you can nail eight of those player picks... You can win a hundred times your bet on Sleeper. You heard me, Preds fans. You can win a hundred times your money by playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code Locked on NHL and it'll get up to a one hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. Again, that's code Locked on NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. All right, Dan, we are breaking down Saturday's 2-0 loss to the New York Islanders and last night's 3-2 overtime win over the New Jersey Devils. A mixed bag for the Nashville Predators. And what is your one word to describe the Nashville Predators games this weekend? So I think this is probably one word that I've used before, but it absolutely fits again. And we've been doing this podcast for how many seasons now? So at some point, look, friends, we're just going to keep using, like, we're going to revisit some one word. So again, bear with us. But my one word for this weekend is Braxton Hicks, which if, you know, you have been pregnant or know someone who's pregnant, Braxton Hicks contractions, they call them like practice contractions. Did you know anything about this, Nick? I thought Braxton Hicks was a guy, but continue on. (laughs) No, No, they're called Braxton Hicks contractions and they feel like real contractions. um, And people refer to them as their like practice contractions, but they don't necessarily do anything as far as dilating or getting a woman really more advanced towards labor. So they're called Braxton Hicks or false contractions. But here's what I will say about it. They feel like real contractions. As one who has had them, Braxton Hicks feel like real contractions. And while they may not advance labor or help a woman dilate more and and all of that stuff, they do prepare your body for the experience of labor. So they're not useless. And when I look at this this weekend, you know, you can look at these games and you think, wow, you know what? Nashville only scored three goals in these two games. They went one and one on the weekend. They had to go to a shootout to beat New Jersey Devils. But friends, it's not nothing. You know, these games were still valuable. If you go and you look at expected goals for you know, the Predators were still doing something. Now, you know, in in the New York Islanders game, they didn't win the game, but they had the lead in expected goals for. They had the advantage in Corsi for, which is like puck possession time. They had the advantage in high danger shots. It just didn't result in anything. So some of this weekend felt a lot to me like Braxton Hicks contractions where, you know, it seemed like a lot of work, nothing really happened, but still there's a point to it. And I think if Nashville can kind of keep getting to their game, I don't think they're getting to it as soon as they want to, but Nashville's going to keep getting to their game. They're preparing themselves for the playoffs. And so for me, it's, it was just a Braxton Hicks weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah, good. I yeah. learned something today. Now you don't have to read what to expect when you're expecting. Yeah. I just saved you some time. <laughs> um, speaking, speaking of being pregnant or marriages <laughs> or anything like that, uh, my one word for this weekend is marriage counseling. Now, interesting. Um, there's no shame in going to marriage counseling. That's, you know, in fact, a lot of couples do it before they're married just to like strengthen their, like my friends, uh, when they got engaged, started doing the, 
going through their church and doing like the couple's marriage counseling thing to like get them ready for that. There's no shame in it, but you know, how it works is, you know, maybe there's a big underlying sort of thing that you're trying to solve or like a big thing you're trying to avoid, or, you know, maybe just some big underlying tension that you're trying to get to the root of and what the marriage counselor will have you do um, is work kind of towards, you know, small goals, like where it's like, hey, you know, here are little tiny situations that can lead up to big problems. Um, so what you'll do is work on these things. Like, hey, you know, maybe you're not instantly going to get like the spark back or resolve this big thing you're getting through um, or exactly going to be on the same page about this, but learn like little bits of gratitude in this moment, like practice gratitude or practice like setting aside one night to do this or like do this. And then like slowly as we start to build these little habits or fix these little things, then you start kind of reaching your end goal. And it felt like this weekend was kind of like you saw the small habits that the Nashville mm. Predators are trying to re-get back to after the, you know, a three straight losses. Because yeah. I think you and I talked, it's like, oh, did the Predators peak at the wrong time? Are they going on, you know, kind of the negative trend? And after that loss to the Islanders, you would think like, oh, well, they've lost you know, four out of five now. And look, they got leapfrogged by Vegas and St. Louis is catching up and all of this. But then you kind of look and it's like, look at the Islanders game. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. like let's not worry about the final score. What did you do during that game? You had a really strong power play where you got some good movement, good chances, really peppered a lot of shots. You controlled possession for most of the game. Yeah. You know, your offense was buzzing. You were being clean with the puck. You were controlling the puck, controlling the play a lot. You're getting a lot of traffic. Um, you know, you still got a lot of traffic on net. You got even more chances just because the Islanders blocked an insane amount of shots. Yet you had a total of 75 shot attempts in this game. That's pretty good. Um, you know, and so there's like little things that you looked at that maybe there, and there's a, the big thing. And for me is there's a lot of energy there. This very weekend. true. You know, there's a lot of speed. The energy was back. The predators look like they were back on the front foot, not necessarily waiting for the game to come to them. Um, and that's not something we saw during that three game losing streak. And it felt like the Nashville predators are just trying to fix like certain parts of their game and getting back to the team that they were during that streak. So this felt like a little bit like, you know, a little bit like a count, like what, how a counselor would prescribe this weekend for the national yeah. predators like hey let's let's not worry about the the final score of this islanders game let's focus on looking at what you did you had a lot of energy you didn't have that in the right. last three games you had a lot of offense you controlled the game you didn't do that during the three game losing streak so i think you can look at that and and look at how they played against the devils because i thought this was another the devils game too was another really good game for the nashville predators other than that one power play immediately preceding the power play that led to the, the game tying goal for Luke Evangelista. So yeah. even then there's not a lot to complain about in either of these two games, other than just the final score of the Islanders game turned out to. So this is like the little bit of therapy for the Nashville Predators working in their favor here. Yeah. Like they, you know, the honeymoon phase was that 18 game point streak, you know, these, you know, the three losses, the four losing four out of five was like, oh, we've moved in together and now we share a bathroom. And then this weekend, yeah. I agree with you. Like this is definitely, yeah, sharing the bathroom. That's a whole shocking thing. But yeah, I do think this this weekend was, hey, look at the little things that that you have there and build on them for sure. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll just ask you, Anne, like, mm -hmm. are you satisfied with how the Predators looked? in these two games. Cause I know like, you know, we were talking about when the predators were down two one off camera, we were like, you know, did the predators maybe peak a little bit too mm -hmm. early? Are they yeah. sliding a bit before the playoffs? Did you see enough this weekend that makes you think like, no, this is still that 
predator, dangerous predators team. That's going to be a hard first round matchup. I, you know what? I think we're seeing what's interesting is I think when you look at an 18 game point streak, you can tend when you look back to romanticize it and think, man, the Predators just dominated in all of those games. No, there were some games like they was it uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. They beat one nothing like there were some games that they won just by playing just like they played in these two games this weekend. So I think you have to kind of say, you know what, this this is similar to what we saw over that 18-game point streak. I do wonder if the Preds are a little bit tired. And this is why I'm like, mm-hmm. wrap this up so that we can rest some people. Now, and then, then you have to wrestle with the whole, well, do we want to stay in it for the, uh, you know, wild card one, wild card two? Do we want to keep all of our best guys out there to make sure we get the right matchup? And I think, you know, the Predators, I think, are a little bit tired maybe. Mm -hmm. But I do think this is still a Predators team that in the postseason can get a second wind and come back and, and be a threatening team. And friends, in case you didn't know, in real time, the game between the Blues and the Ducks is tied. So Yes. That happened while you were giving while your we were talking. question. <laughs> so, you know, it would be great, I think, if the Predators could maybe get some rest. We know Philip Forsberg is not practicing because he's got some sort of nagging injury. I don't think it would hurt anybody for Ryan O'Reilly, got Snyquist to maybe take a little bit of a rest. Tommy Novak took a puck to the face. Does he need a day? Like, so, but I do think overall, this is still that same team. I just think maybe they're a little bit tired. So, you know, to lock this up would be great. Yeah. Uh, let's see where the Nashville Predators are in the playoff picture. And, you know, you kind of hit on something interesting, Anne. Do you try to go for a specific matchup here? Maybe if you think the number two seed is better, like tank, not tank, but, you know, Take the gas off a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Let's get to that conversation coming up here in just a second, shall we? First, we want to let you know this episode is brought to you by our great friends at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. That's the formula for winning championships. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to make your car the mvp and bring home huge wins keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusion supply ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers all right, and so let's look at the playoff situ- situation for the Nashville Predators right now. Um, again, as we're talking. In real uh, time. It is, it is a magic number of one for the Nashville Predators. Uh, but the Anaheim Ducks are Just- going into overtime with the St. Louis Blues. So it is very possible by the end of this podcast, the Predators could clinch a Stanley Cup playoff spot. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, well, why not? Um, but but let, let's talk about where the Nashville Predators are uh, in the standings right now, And So so obviously uh, a little bit up and down. For the moment, they, they leapfrog Vegas. Uh, Vegas plays tomorrow night against the Canucks, which... That's that's going to be a banger that's game, so they have a chance to go back in. Uh, you kind of alluded to this a little bit by before the break. You know, you were saying the Predators were tired uh, a little bit. Like, if you're the Nashville Predators and you see a matchup that you would rather have, I guess, like, it, let's say the Nashville Predators clinch. What's sort of the strategy for these last four games, and? Like is is it a situation in which you 
like maybe rest some people like you're just kind of content with where you are right now Mm -hmm. um or is it a situation where you know what screw it we'll take on anybody we just want to go out and you know end this end this season on a high note keep winning games all that it's really a tricky situation if you ask the team andrew brunette has been very clear and said we'll take whoever you give us. And I really do believe that's where the Predators are. Like we will play whoever where we get in my mind though. I think there are better matchups for Nashville in the first round than others, but I think you want to rest some guys regardless of what that means as far as who you get. I really just think the Predators are going to stand a better chance resting some players and going up against whomever you know, uh, Dallas, Colorado, you know, then to push through and say, you know, no, you know, we want to try to get everybody going until the end. Maybe we'll rest Forsberg, but everybody else push through. I just really think rest is more important than matchup in the big picture for the Predators. I really do. Interesting. So like, let's say like, like let's say like the standings hold right now and Dallas mm-hmm. is going to be the number one team and Vancouver is going to be the number two team. Um, like are you, are you saying like, screw it? We'll, we'll rest up and play Dallas regardless of how hot they are right now. Um, instead of being like, uh, I don't, I don't know about Vancouver in these last, you know, couple weeks of the season. Like we, we sense maybe blood in the water there. So you, you're you're you would rather go for rest than maybe going against like we'd rather go against Vancouver. I think we would rather go against Vancouver, but I yeah. think the Predators are going to need to be at their best regardless of who they play, because I think that the Western Conference has some really dominant teams that you're going to, you know, you're going to need to be at your best. And as much as I'm like, you know, if I was forced to pick, I would rather the Predators play somebody like Vancouver because right now Dallas is so hot. But I do think we've seen Nashville can beat Dallas. Mm-hmm. And I think to to make it competitive, they have to rest up Forsberg, O'Reilly, probably Nyquist, you know, maybe some of the some of the younger guys. Like I, I really do think that that getting the team as rested and healthy as they can be is the best strategy. That has to be the number one priority over let's figure out what we need to win to to play a certain opponent. Like, I just don't see Andrew Burnett playing that game. I don't see the Predators playing that game. That's yeah. that's my take on it. But I don't know. I mean, what do you what do you think? Uh, let, let me put it like this. I don't think they would like tank for a favorable matchup. Or no. Anything like that. Um, I, th- I think really the Predators mindset right now is let's focus on us. Mm-hmm. And let's take care of what we need to take care of. Uh, it's I, it, I don't think at this point you're going to catch Winnipeg uh, unless yeah. they absolutely fall just fall apart here yeah. in the next little bit. Um, you know, so if, if you're the Predators, it's kind of making sure you're playing the same way you've been playing you know, these past three games, like make sure your offense is on point, like making sure your guys aren't doing the little mistakes that lead to issues during games. I think that's going to be the focus here for the last Mm -hmm. half of the season. Um, I think it's tricky too, because you want to, it's, it's such a hard thing because you want to rest up and be physically well, but you also want to keep momentum And if you sit some guys, what does that do to line chemistry? What does that do to the team being used to playing at a certain pace? Like, I think there's so many little factors that go into that decision. I do still think being physically as healthy as possible is key, but you also like, you don't want to, you don't want to get too far off of what Nashville has been doing lately either. So like, it's a dance. I think it's going to be a dance for Andrew Brunette. And, yeah. and it would be so nice if we knew if they were in, but it looks like overtime is going to end with the Ducks and the Blues tied. Not yeah, we're on. <laughs> we're going to find out before the end of the podcast. I know. I keep refreshing the the homepage Me too. On, on Twitter to see like, huh? Anybody? 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 Yet? Anybody? Yeah. I know. Uh, I'm just come on, y'all. Yeah, come on, come on, Anaheim. 
Um, let's let's give it like one more minute, Anne. Okay. Um, let's talk about the next game for the Nashville Predators. Ooh. That is against the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah. Uh, it is. Um, yeah, like it is probably the game. And it's at Bridgestone Arena. Um, even, even if both teams have something wrapped up, I would argue like this is the game that means the most mm-hmm. for the Nashville Predators. And it, it's kind of like the same way I called the Blues a must-win game last week. Where it's like it feels like you just want to win that because it's going to have a playoff feel. Yes. And I feel like it's important, you know, you've looked at seasons past and, you know, the Nashville Predators teams that always did a lot of damage in the first round were the Nashville Predators teams that were able to win those types of games late in the season, win those must win games. That's why I think it's like the Jets might be your first kind of big test to see where this team really is right now. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree with you. I also think it's so important for momentum. Like, I really think that you want to springboard into whatever the postseason looks like with whomever takes the ice in these last couple of games. But if you can springboard into that with a win, with a solid performance against a team that you know is going to be a playoff team. I think that does a tremendous amount, not just for the Nashville Predators, you know, for Andrew Brunette. I think it also does a ton for the Nashville Predators fan base to say, look, you know what, that 18 point consecutive streak, not a fluke. And, you know, we can be competitive in the first round of these playoffs. So I do think that this game Tuesday night is going to be a really big one for the Predators. And at any moment, we'll know whether they need it. (laughs) We're in shootout round one, y'all. Shootout round one, you're watching it live with us. Here we go. Do do we just do we just live do the shootout? We just need to just live. Okay, so okay, let's okay. So we're doing. uh, Did not make it on the first shootout. It it was a good try. Up, he lifted it up and off the post. So nothing from Zegris. Okay, Trevor. Is it it, was it was Zegris the first shot? I think he's the first. Yep, this is round one. All right, St. Louis Blues. This is a big moment in. Yeah, number twenty-five. He's slowing down. Oh, he scored. Rat Fink. Was that Jordan? Okay, so Jordan Skyrie scored. Guys, this is this is a big moment. Is this our first like live? This is our first live. Watch? I don't think we're Willie Donick and Chris Mason, but why not try it? Yeah. Man. Yeah, lifted it up over the right pad. That's a stinker. All right, number 91 going for the Ducks. Coming in on Jordan Bennington, skating down. He's in the slot. And Bennington gets the stop. Come on, y'all. I I mean, can we have nice things? (laughs) (laughs) That was Carlson, by the way, who got stopped by the right skate of Jordan Bennington. I I was going to, I thought it was Carlson, but I I was about to say, like, you. I, All you right, Braden make Shen is up. Them. For the love of your brother, Braden Shen, could you whip on this? Braden Shen's coming in, and we get the stop. Braden Shen All misses. Right. Okay, Braden Shen misses. Thank you, Braden. You'll get something nice from Luke for Christmas. Pay up, Luke. Shen w- tried to lift it up over the left shoulder and went over the net. All These right. things happen. This is it. Come on, Ducks. Number 19, Troy Terry. He is six for 19 on shootouts in his career. I just read the stat off the screen. Bennington stopped it. Oh, okay. So, but that's good. We now know the Fred's magic number is one. <laughs> Sorry, so. y'all. We really were hoping we were gonna live, like we were gonna live the the Preds are in, but that's yeah. gonna come. Yeah, on that would have that would have been an all time moment for this podcast. But it's maybe cute. maybe it'll happen next time. It's maybe you know what we should do this in a playoff game because who wouldn't tune in for that? Yeah. Uh, we need we need to set up like a live watch sometime where we're just that'd be so on the fun. game. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. Would, so would, sorry, would... y'all. After all of that cliffhanger through this whole 
episode that you all already knew the end of tomorrow morning, Fred's Magic Numbers one. Yeah. Well, anyway. Anyway. Uh, tomorrow on the Lockdown Predators podcast, uh, it's it's a big game. Predators Huge. versus Jets. We'll have preview for that. Talk about some of the other key storylines. Until we get there, though, thank you for making Lockdown Predators your first listen of the day. Every single day, we'll be back with an odd episode tomorrow.